Hi guys and welcome back to Cute Life Hacks. In this video, I'll show you how to make these amazing transparent gummy bear squishies. These look so realistic that you have to keep them away from small children and pets because they can be easily mistaken for real edible sweets. The secret behind DIY squishies is this product called Hitohata Gel. This is a two-part resin that cures into a soft rubbery texture. I've already made a video for the milky version, which is the pink box on the left, and that became super popular, so be sure to check it out here. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to Cute Life Hacks on my other channel, Macaroon. So now let's take a look at the transparent version of Hitohara Gel. If you've watched the first video, you'll know that I had quite a lot of problems getting this to work. The gel is also quite expensive, so don't say I didn't warn you before you click on the shopping link below. Even though the packaging looks adorable with this little mascot guy everywhere, this is not a children's crafting set because you have to work extremely precisely. Like the previous video, I've included all of my fails in here as well, so you won't end up making the same mistakes. First of all, I'm going to make some gummy bear molds. I bought a large packet of gummy bears and put them inside the freezer for a few hours. Once they're frozen, they become solid like plastic and are much easier to mold. I'm going to make my mold using a two-part silicone putty, which you can get from craft shops or online. Mix equal amounts of both colors together and then create a ball large enough for your gummy bear. Press the bear downwards into the putty and then gently push all the edges inwards. You can repeat this as often as you want, and I'd recommend making at least four or five molds at once, just in case some of them don't turn out perfect. Leave the silicone to harden for about 15 minutes, and then you can peel your gummy bears out. Unfortunately, these gummy bears are no longer edible because they're covered with silicone oil, but I think this was a worthy sacrifice. And now let's move on to the resin. The mixing ratio for transparent Hitohata gel is 1 to 1, which is much easier to calculate than the milky version. The bottle with the mascot on it is the base resin, and this is the one you should always measure first. Before starting, I just want to check how much liquid actually fits inside my mold. I did this by filling the mold with water and then weighing it. The total for making a gummy bear is only 2 grams, so I technically only need 1 gram each of both resins. However, this is almost impossible to measure and mix, so the smallest amount I managed to pour was about 5 grams. If you want to add color, then you should do this in the base resin, so I used a few drops of food coloring to turn these into gummy bear shades. Spoiler alert coming up! If you watched the first part of this video, then you already know that Hitohara gel and food coloring don't mix, so this batch of squishies is destined to fail. But at the time, I didn't know it, so after mixing each one of these, I added an equal amount of hardener and then poured them into the molds. The resin takes 24 hours to cure at room temperature, so I left it overnight and came back the next day. Then just as I mentioned, these squishies didn't set at all. They were still completely liquid, so I had to throw everything out. For the second attempt, I decided to make one gummy bear first exactly according to the instructions, so nothing should go wrong. I measured out the tiniest amount possible of base resin and then added the same amount of hardener. Then I filled the mold up with this clear squishy mixture. My favorite gummy bear flavor is actually the transparent pineapple one, so I was quite happy with this. Next, I still really want to try making some colored gummy bears. This time, I decided to use powder pigments instead of liquid food coloring. I simply took some soft pastels and then used scissors to scrape off the dust. Then I added a tiny amount to the base resin and mixed everything through. I noticed that the pastel dust looks a bit grainy since the particles are larger. If you want a completely smooth color, then you should get special pigments designed for use with resin. Next, I added the same amount of hardener to each cup. This part was quite tricky since the total amount is so tiny. As you'll see later on, I ended up with different squishy textures because there were minuscule differences in the hardener here. I'm sure this is less of a problem if your squishy is slightly bigger since small differences in the ratio won't have such an impact. 
I actually had enough resin to make two gummy bears of each color, so this is another reason why you should make a few more molds just in case. Then I left everything to cure for another 24 hours. This time round, the squishies looked much better. Each one had turned solid, including the colored ones, which really surprised me. If you watched my first video, then you'll know that the milky squishy where I tried using pastel color failed as well, so I can't explain why these gummy bears worked, even though they actually contain more pigment in relation to the total size. So as you can see here, the Hitohara gel forms a squishy texture and is perfectly transparent. I was really excited to take this out of the mold, but once again, this project is anything but predictable. Just when I thought I had my pineapple bear, this simply broke into half. I guess I must have added too much hardener, although this was impossible to tell even by using measuring scales. The total amount was less than 1 gram, but it was still enough to affect the texture of this tiny squishy. With the second gummy bear, I was extremely careful and tried keeping my finger underneath the whole time. Luckily, this one turned out perfect and it wasn't even sticky, so I didn't have to use any talcum powder. If you look very closely, you do notice these tiny flecks of color which came from the pastel dust. I don't really mind this effect, but as mentioned earlier, you can always use special resin pigment for a completely smooth color. So out of five gummy bears, two of them ended up breaking and three turned out really well. If you see any uneven bits on the sides, then you can simply trim those off with scissors. Interestingly, all three bears had a slightly different softness, which was most likely due to tiny differences in the hardener. However, I'm still really happy with how these turned out because I've never even seen a transparent squishy before and the first one just happened to be one I made myself. In addition to just playing with them, I think these gummy bears will make really unique charms, earrings or necklace pendants. Though just as a reminder, you have to keep these away from small children because they actually look like real candy but are absolutely not edible and could be a choking hazard. So my overall impression of Hitohara gel is that it should be considered as a very special crafting experience. It's worth trying this out just to be able to create something very unique, but it's obviously not something that you can do regularly or sell for profit. Lots of people have correctly pointed out that it's much cheaper to just buy squishies. However, I think that making them yourself is really a one-of-a-kind DIY experience. I really hope you liked this video and please remember to subscribe to Cute Life Hacks, Macaroon and follow me on Instagram. This is Joanna, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next tutorial. Bye! Wow.